And uh, there you have it, the ANC's 2024 election manifesto delivered there by ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa. Let me just get immediate reaction from um, Mzwai Mbeje and of course Dr. Ranesh Doraj. So what did you hear that was new? Well, I wish I knew uh, what was new. All I heard was things that um, have been said before. I would want to hear the actual plans. Um, perhaps outside of the actual plans, I would really want to hear the actual implementation of that which they have spoken about. I mean, as the president was speaking, we went through the manifesto of 2019. So many of the things that the president spoke about are there. Then the question is, how are they going to do it differently this time around? So yes, that is the pressing question in South Africa. The jobs is actually the most important question. Ending corruption, investing in infrastructure, that is very important in the country right now. The question, Doc and, Sak and Sakina, how do they go about dealing with that practically? And, and if we unpack that, starting with the jobs question, uh, Dr. Uh, Ranesh, again, we've heard it from the other two parties that we've covered as well. Yeah. The ANC is saying 2.5 million, but jobs, job opportunities, yeah. what's the difference? I think here we are talking about quality jobs, but in the case of the ANC's manifesto, those job opportunities are notably uh, expanded public works, op uh, you know, job opportunities. So those jobs don't last long. It's around three to six months. There's a small payment involved. Obviously, people are getting the experience, but I think here we are looking for quality jobs. And I think the ANC president was very scant, very unclear about that. Uh, you know, to create those kind of jobs, you need investment. You need investment. How does one invest in a country when you cannot guarantee uh, electricity firstly then you cannot guarantee water supply you know those two things are basic essentials so to attract investment uh, attract interest from businesses even small businesses big businesses you need to get uh, you need to get the basics correct first and I think that's where uh, the ANC and you know obviously some of the other parties are not addressing those issues need to be tackled first like uh, MZY is saying you know tell us how we've heard all of this political rhetoric obviously it's election year uh, you know politicians will say a lot of things they will make lots of grand promises but tell us how give us deadlines give us targets those things I think uh, we did not we did not hear from the ANC president in his address today speaking of you know the conditions to create those opportunities in Eskom where was Eskom in all of this because that obviously is a key factor in order to create the relevant conditions I suspect, um, as part of advice, as he was preparing for this speech, um, was to say, maybe let's not say much on load shedding, because um, almost every opportunity that the president has got, he has stressed that op load shedding is something that needs to be dealt with. So I guess he doesn't want to sound like a, break a broken record. But that is quite key, because if you are talking about growth and economy and creating jobs, you need stable energy. Yeah. Stable energy will only will come from ESCOM that is functional, ESCOM that provides electricity non-stop. So if you are not able to then handle that, so we know obviously those are some of the areas they are looking at. What, Doc, uh, what you said was to say the timelines. You know what I would like to hear uh, from a speech like this? To say in the next five years when we get given power again, so in two years we would have ended load shedding in three years would have employed so many people because you are able to then go back to say um if we are not able to achieve that which we we promised these were the reasons but the but reality it, yeah. is they can't yes so okay. you you cannot uh, put those sort of time frames in place yeah. knowing full well that you will not achieve them because the president yeah. did mention the rollout of solar panels uh, you know for yeah. um rdp houses so how does that work again because we don't even produce solar panels in South Africa. And I think, uh, you know, that's a very expensive process, uh, yeah. by the way, you know, uh, rolling out solar panels throughout the country. Uh, you know, if you look at the past year, there was a tax incentive uh, given to households for installing so, uh, solar capability. I, if my numbers are correct, I think five gigawatt, uh, gigawatts of solar uh, electricity was generated, you know, just to help alleviate the situation that ESCOM faces in generating electricity. But Sakina, just to go back to, to, to uh, you know, what the president was saying, 
team. I think for me, two things told, uh, stood out very boldly. Obviously, he put the ANC at the center of everything. He says the ANC ended apartheid. The ANC ended colonialism. You need to thank us, and the only way you can thank us by, you know, is obviously by giving us an extended term, another five years at the helm of this country. Under the ANC, life has become better. We've provided superior health care, jobs, education. We've reduced poverty. We've tripled the economy since 1994. 60% of our budget since 1994 goes to socioeconomic programs. Today, South Africa is a much better vibrant democracy because and only because of the ANC. Obviously, we have done a lot, but more has to be done. I think that was the central message of the ANC, uh, you know, when the president did speak. I think what the president sought to say basically in this um, manifesto launch was to say we are aware of the difficulties that we've gone through but please remember that which we have done for you the reason why you are even able to point out some of the issues that are affecting you is because we have enabled that possibility and then he sought to tap into the past history and the past glory of course acknowledging somehow that there have been challenges and and he says this because he knows um south africans are much more open uh, in terms of who they can vote for now i mean way back in 1994 yes there were different parties but realistically um you had very very few parties that were an option right now there is an option so he used this opportunity really to speak about the achievements of the anc in the past 30 years not only from 2019 and he is trying to obviously project an image of a country that is working he is saying um don't just look at the next five years look at the next 30, 30 years. years so what does that tell you that tells you that even if let's say you give us the mandate for the next five years and somehow we don't do well we did tell you that the project that we are building is bigger so it requires the more context time. is quite big yes. yeah. yeah so it, it was interesting because i thought the president was vacillating there between being humble and acknowledging failures but also being uh, almost arrogant about achievements and what is still to come um you know he spoke there for example uh, it was a tacit admission of the failure of local government yeah. uh, on the water issue for example talking yeah. about how national government will need to step in we've seen that with the roads where national uh, the government had to come and step in to fix potholes so how do we see that sort of admission because through the eye of a needle as well um talking about training through the eye of the needle the ANC's very own document speaks about training continuous mm. training mm. of their candidates so why you know one of the things that the president spoke about which i think they now need to actually actualize in terms of doing they talk about investing in infrastructure if the ANC dips below 50 this election they must know what would be the difficulties because people um, are seeing uh, the infrastructure decay in front of them people are seeing uh, the challenges happening in front of them so if then you talk about local government but you don't invest in local government in terms of the capacitating it properly so you'll have the kind of results that we are having i mean look at the state of our roads yes there are those that are good but look at the state of our roads look at the state of our municipalities mm -hmm. so those are infrastructure projects that are very visible to the eye to the people they they deal with them throughout so train people skill people deal with that so that would be another big challenge again. but also the way we uh, couch that uh, you know allows for a lot of room for uh, confusion and misinterpretation because if you think about it for example um, some of the capital projects that happen at municipal level are actually done through national competence they are not local competencies but then at the same time you have local competencies that are also you know way beyond acceptable standard be, uh, below acceptable standard so you know why aren't we speaking clearly to people so they understand what the failures are and perhaps where we need to improve Sakina, I think, uh, you know, the tragedy of this entire thing is that people 
on the ground do not know the difference between national government, provincial government, and local government competency, uh, competencies. So people don't really know, you know, this is the responsibility, roads is the responsibility of local government. People don't see that. Voters don't see that. I think where the change has to happen, you know, I'm kind of glad. It's about time that the ANC president at this manifesto launch, he brought in that local government aspect. He says national will intervene. You know, normally we get the provincial administration, provincial government intervening uh, section 139 uh, you know, putting those municipalities under administration. But right now, he's making that firm commitment to say that we will intervene. Going back to the SG's report, the Secretary General's report uh, of the ANC, I think it was back in 2016, where the SG uh, correctly diagnosed, he says, the ANC's weakest point is not national, is not provincial, it is local, it is local government. So they have acknowledged, they have confessed, they have admitted that local government is where the problem is. And I'm kind of glad that in 2024, before a major election, they've kind of uh, admitted that this is where attention needs to be, uh, you know, diverted to. And also very importantly, I think what also needs to change is, if you look at the amounts, the, 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 the millions or billions that is allocated Located to local government on a yearly uh, on a yearly basis is just under 10 to 11 percent. It's not more than that. Municipalities, whether you're rich, poor, uh, an established town, an established metro, you are allowed to fend for yourself. You need to correct, uh, collect rates and taxes from uh, those ratepayers. So I think um, it's about time that the ANC actually intervened, and the president said so very clearly earlier on. Uh, that local government allocation has to change. You know. Maybe but, provincial but government, cut from provincial this. government. They, they've been talking about this. Mm, you know, you mm. hit the nail on the head yeah. from the 2016 report. It went further. They actually discussed, you know, the strength of their cadres, where they acknowledged that their strongest cadres are actually at, uh, deployed at national level. And, and perhaps this is something that needs to be looked at. But nothing has changed since then, is right? Certainly. I mean, I think... Um well, this is an election that they are fighting. So uh, we, we, we're speaking about them as post-29 um, uh, post May. So we don't know what's going to happen. But I think what, what the, the ANC needs to do, I mean, they are the governing party at the moment. So if they win the elections, yeah. so it's about time they start um, implementing some of the great um, programs that they have. That which we are speaking about now, it's there. Yeah. So we have been going through some of what they had been promising. Mm. But then you ask yourself, what has been difficult from implementing it? Is it because, in fact, that's the reason I guess uh, the DA ended up pursuing that case. Never mind that uh, I think it's also it's blowing, it, blowing in somewhat. their face because yeah. somehow. Because what they were basically saying was to say, as the ANC, the reason why you are failing to implement your own policies is because you're putting people who are not fit for purpose or who are not qualified. So clearly, if the ANC is to correct that, as you are saying, Doc, yeah. that they are now speaking about local government, they need to put people who are really qualified. You can't just talk about skilled people yet at the um, implementation of a project. So the results are different. Mm, final word. Sakina, you know, it's all good and well to say all these wonderful flowery things, but how do you hold another comrade accountable? Comrades are elected at regional executive, uh, executive, uh, executive committees, provincial executive committees, branch executive branch. committees. How do you hold those peop uh, people accountable? When you win an REC, you're the chair, you're the secretary of the PEC, you automatically qualify to possibly be a premier, possibly get an uh, uh, MEC's position you know, on the cabinet. Uh, you know, how do you hold those people accountable when you have that power at party level? So I think that's where the disjuncture is. The ANC needs to address those matters first, and then all the other corrections will automatically you know, fall into place. So just to uh, sum, uh, sum up what was said here this afternoon, six priority areas, uh, which is interesting, um, EFF had seven, the DA had seven, seven the yeah. ANCs had six. So here are the six. And the priority number one, put South Africa to work. Priority number two, build our industries for an inclusive economy. And then uh, the third one is tackle the high cost of living. The fourth is to invest in people. And then the fifth, um, defend democracy and advance freedom. And the sixth one is to build a better Africa and a better world. These are the six priorities 
for the African National Congress. And as you heard from the ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa, they want another five-year extension of the mandate given by South Africa. But they're looking beyond that. 30 years, another 30 years is what they are asking for. Mzwaim Beche, Dr. Ranesh Doraj, it's been a pleasure. Bongiwe as well earlier with us, Bongiwe Zwane, and of course the rest of the team. With that, it's back to Auckland Park. Over to you, Liesl. Thanks, Sakina, and thank you to our team in KZN. Of course, we're monitoring developments. There you've heard it, the ANC launching its manifesto. Six key priorities, the areas rather that had been highlighted there. The ANC, its various structures, alliance partners, and of course, its supporters coming out to fill the Moses Mabida Stadium to its capacity. We're looking at what has been highlighted. Really trying to make sense of this, that he has entered democracy as the ruling party. So we'll bring you all that and more, of course, as the day progresses. You're watching Essay Today with myself, Liesl Wilson.